Hello, everybody, and welcome back to day two of Bolt VBS. We've already had some seriously wacky fun, but we're not finished yet. I hope you're ready to get a little bit wet today because we're literally going to be soaking in God's word. Before we get started, though, I want to do something really cool with you. I'm going to show you an image in just a second. When I show it to you, I want you to focus on the four dots in the middle for about 30 seconds. Keep staring at the four dots until I tell you to stop. When the image goes away, close your eyes and then tell me what you see. You're doing great. Keep staring at the four dots for a little bit longer. Okay, now close your eyes and keep them closed until I tell you to open them. Do you see something? What is it? Isn't that so cool? It's a picture of Jesus. That's what today is all about, keeping your eyes focused on Jesus. Because if you do that, you'll be able to see Jesus even in the middle of your darkest times. Okay, open your eyes again. Here's the best part. We get to learn that by playing some amazingly fun games. In fact, I think we should get started. So come on, let's bolt. Welcome everybody to BSTN, Bolt Sports Television Network. My name is David Rausch, and this is my co-anchor, Tim the Tooth Fairy Woodrum. Tim, why do they call you the Tooth Fairy? Well, David, once again, they don't. You just called me that for the very first time. How about that? And another big welcome to all of you viewers at home. Thank you for joining us for today's broadcast of the world's most popular water sport. No, I'm not talking about surfing or swimming or even Marco Polo. I'm talking about a sport called Soaked. That's right, David. There's been a tidal wave of interest in this sport ever since Michael Phelps left his career in swimming in order to compete as a soaked pro athlete. And joining me today to talk about his new career is Michael Phelps. Wait a second. Are you serious? You got us an interview with Michael Phelps, the gold medal swimmer? What? No, we don't have that kind of budget. Michael Phelps is also the name of a dolphin. A dolphin? Tim, no, you're not doing this again. You're not going to pretend like the dolphin is talking just like you did last week with the sloth. First of all, I deny ever doing that. Second, okay, maybe I did it once. And third, no, nobody tells Michael Phelps what to say. He's got a mind of his own. So if you don't mind, I'd like to ask him a few questions. Michael Phelps, thank you for joining us. In your opinion, do you think David is a better sports announcer than me? Do you think I'm better? And I'm more handsome too, right? Thank you for your time, Michael Phelps. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Dolphins don't lie. I don't know, this seems fishy to me, but we're out of time. It looks like today's match is about to begin. Let's join Casey down on the field as she explains how the competition works. All right, athletes, you know how this game works. You're gonna lay side by side. On one side is a bin full of water. On the other side is an empty bin. As fast as you can, you have to move all of the water from one bin to the other using only a sponge. Do you understand the rules? Yes, ma'am! All right, athletes, let's get in position. Ready, set, go!
was truly a battle of champions. And now, for those of you watching at home, it's your turn to play. That's right, Tim. When I say so, press pause on the video. Then go play Soaked for yourself. You can play together as one team and time yourself, or if you have enough people, you can split into multiple teams and race against each other. When you're finished though, don't rest just yet because there are even more games for you to play. When all of the games are finished, grab a snack, open your Bibles to the verses on the screen and read them together. After that, press play again and join us in progress. Are you ready? It's time to bolt in three, two, one, press pause. Oh, hey, you're back. So I'm guessing that by now, you really understand why the game is called Soaked. In fact, some of you probably got more water on you than you did in the bowl. Believe it or not, there's a guy in the Bible who totally understands what that feels like. His name is Peter. And in today's Bible story, Peter gets soaked. In the Bible, in Matthew 14, Jesus told his disciples to get into a boat and to sail to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. While they sailed away, Jesus went up to a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, a huge storm moved in and the wind and the waves started pounding the boat. The boat rocked up and down as the seawater splashed over and over in the disciples' faces. They were starting to feel a bit seasick, but more than that, they were afraid that they were about to become fish food. Hour after hour, the disciples row, row, rowed the boat, but it wasn't gently down a stream. It was through a raging sea and they were getting nowhere fast. Just when it started to look hopeless though, the disciples saw something strange. Something or someone was walking towards them. The disciples started to totally freak out. They yelled, it's a ghost. But it wasn't a ghost. It was Jesus. And he was walking on the water. Jesus called out to the disciples, I'm not a ghost. It's me, Jesus. Don't be afraid. One of the disciples named Peter yelled back through the storm, if it's really you, Jesus, tell me to come to you on the water. So that's exactly what Jesus did. Come, he said. So Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water towards Jesus. But just then, the wind started blowing again. When Peter saw the wind, he became super scared and began to sink into the water. Soaking wet, Peter reached out toward Jesus and cried, Lord, save me. Right away, Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. Jesus said, your faith is so small, Peter. Why did you doubt me? Jesus pulled Peter out of the water and into the boat. Right then, the storm instantly stopped and the wind died down. Once again, the disciples had seen Jesus perform a miracle. So they worshiped him and they said, you really are the son of God. Welcome one and welcome all to the BSTN coverage of Professional Indoor Origami. Once again, my name is David Rausch and this is my co-anchor, Tim Woodrum. Tim, yesterday we saw a masterful performance by our paper folding athlete. Do you think he can top it with today's performance? Well, let's hope so. Today, our origami athlete will be competing to create a paper boat. Now, viewers at home, remember that you too can participate in the origami action. For today's event, you only need nimble fingers and a square piece of paper. The paper can be any color, including white. And if at any time you need to pause or rewind the video, including right now, don't hesitate to do so. 
Well, David, our origami athlete looks like he is smoldering for some foldering. Let's go now to courtside and watch the action unfold. Once again, we join Hans Handerson from Germany. This time I'm told that he will be attempting to make an origami boat out of a single piece of paper. David, I think now would be a good time to remind our viewers that Hans is a professional and they should not try this at home. No, no, Tim, they should try this at home. That's the whole point of this. Hans begins with a power fold right down the middle of the paper, hot dog style. Mmm, boy, that really makes me hungry for a hot dog. Is that a hot dog vendor right there? Hey, hot dog man, one dog please. Tim, not now. Sorry about that, folks. Hans opens the paper to reveal a cross pattern. Corner fold to the center. Get your hot dogs! Get Flattens your down the dogs. edge. Now a second corner fold to the center of the paper. Look at that precision. No one has hands like Hans Anderson. You can say that again, Tim. No, David, I probably can't. Now a third corner fold to the center to form what looks like an envelope. For the kids watching at home, an envelope is what old people used to send emails with. Now we're closing up the envelope with corner number four to the center. You mentioned it before, Tim. Would you look at the precision of that square? And here comes one of Hans's trickier moves. He folds one corner back away from the center, leaving a crease near the edge. Folds it down flat. And now he does it again on the other side, but this time leaving a little more space between the crease and the edge. I'll tell you, there is nothing quite like origami, David. Did you know that the word origami is actually a Swedish word, meaning, will you buy me a meatball? No, Tim, that's definitely not right. Origami is a Japanese word that means the art of folding paper into the likeness of objects. Hmm, yeah, that makes more sense. Hans has folded the entire square in half, and now he folds one corner to the bottom edge, following the old crease, Flattens that edge. And now he folds the other corner in the same way. Again, flattening down that edge. Now one last small, slightly angled fold toward the middle. And look what we have here, folks! Are my eyes deceiving me, or is that a boat? Holy origami tsunami, look at it right in those waves. You can tell it's a boat by the way it looks like a boat. I couldn't have said it better myself, Tim. And there you have it, folks. That does it for today's broadcast of Professional Indoor Origami. Join us again tomorrow for another masterful performance by the origami superstar, Hans Handerson. And once again, happy folding, friends. Isn't that amazing? Jesus should have been sinking, but instead he floated big time. In fact, he didn't just float, he walked on water. Not only that, he helped Peter do the same thing. For a few incredible moments, Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on the water with Jesus. But then Peter did something that caused him to sink. He took his eyes off of Jesus. He focused on the storm around him and he started to doubt. And when he did that, Peter got soaked, soaked. Does that remind you of anything? Imagine that the sponge in the game that you played is kind of like a problem that you face in life. When you focus on your problems and hold on to them, you get soaked with worry and fear. 
And the tighter you hold on to those problems, the more soaked you get. We all face big problems sometimes. For Peter, it was the wind and the waves. But for us, it might be something like our parents getting divorced or getting into a big fight with our friend. When big problems like these come up, it's easy to do what Peter did. It's easy to put all your focus on the problem instead of looking to Jesus. When you do that though, you start to sink in doubt and you get soaked with worry and fear. You know, that makes me think of a question. After I ask the question, I want you to pause the video and talk about it with the people around you. When you're finished, you can press play again. Okay, here's my question. What's a problem that you have that you need to trust Jesus with? Press pause and discuss. I'll bet you all have some pretty serious problems that you're wrestling with. Whenever I'm wrestling with a problem, there's a verse in the Bible that I like to remember. In fact, let's memorize it together. Are you ready? Say this with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. Nice job. Let's do it again, but this time, some of the words are going to disappear. Say it with me again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. That was really good. Let's do it again, but this time, more of the words are going to disappear, and you're going to say it without me. Are you ready? Go ahead and say it. Let's do it one more time, but this time all of the words are going to disappear. Are you ready? Say it one last time. Instead of being soaked in worry and fear, soak yourself in God's word. Whenever you face a problem, say that verse out loud. It helps you to stop focusing on your problem and helps you focus on Jesus. You might not understand how he's going to help you, but if you trust in him with all your heart, he will, because Jesus cares about you and he has power over all of your problems. Day two, hey everybody. I'm Ben Calhoun from Citizen Way and we are on the VBS day two of awesomeness. Here we go, we're gonna sing another song. Yesterday we talked about Bulletproof, the armor of God. He is a lamp to our feet, light into our path. We can listen to God. Today we can, all about. it's all about this. We can focus on Jesus. See, Peter walked on the water. Amazingly, he went to walk on the water. That's what the Bible says. It happened supernaturally and I believe it. And so I wrote a song about it, and I thought we would be able to sing it together. I'm here in my studio, you're here at home. So let's do it together. Here we go. This one's called Wave Walker. Here we go. One, two, a little bit faster. Mm. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Ow! Over my 
my doubt, yeah This supernatural feels so natural now, yeah I don't gotta be afraid no more, yeah Cause I know you up through the storm I'm more than just a talker, I'm a way walker Way walker, I'm dancing on water When the devil tries to shake me, I'll just pray harder Even in my darkest hour, got holy ghost power darkest hour, got holy ghost power, to keep my eyes upon you, Jesus, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a way walker, I'm dancing on water, when the devil tries to shake me, I'm just praying harder, even in my darkest hour, got holy ghost power, keep my eyes upon you, Jesus, I'm a way, I It's true. We don't have to be afraid anymore. Thanks to Jesus, we are all wave walkers and we know that he'll walk with us through the storm. So when something scary happens or when life gets rough, keep your eyes on Jesus. Well, that's it for today, but there's still more to come. Do you wanna see a preview of tomorrow's game? Okay, watch close because it's going to happen fast. Come on. Nice. nice. Good placement. I told you it was going to be fast. If you want to see the rest of the game and play it for yourself, well, join me tomorrow so we can bolt into action one more time. In the meantime, thanks for joining us. Bye.